Hello, my name is Dr. Bertha Sewa Ai. I'm the president of the Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation. I am about to share a video with you which was circulated on the internet in the last few days. It's an interview between Mr. Ben Doche Malo, who is the United Nations Chief Editor of United Nations News, and Dr. Teddy Totime, a neurosurgeon in Ghana. I have spoken to both individuals and received their permission to share their interview and video. In this video, briefly, Dr. Totime talks about the dire lack of newer surgeons in Ghana, that at this time there are only 22 of them. And I want to use that as an opportunity to share the Ghana, College, Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation vision, why we partner with our colleagues in Ghana, why you should support our work, and why you should support what is going on in Ghana in terms of newer surgery. So the vision of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons Foundation is that we are a group of passionate physicians and healthcare providers who particularly partner with our colleagues in Ghana to impact the healthcare delivery systems in Ghana and improve the health of Ghanaians in Ghana and in the diaspora everywhere. So why does neurosurgery matter to us? There are just not enough of neurosurgeons. There's also not enough facilities, CT scans, MRIs that they need to get their work done. More importantly, Ghana does not have a dedicated neurosurgery intensive care unit for patients to recuperate after surgery. And so this is an important need. For us to make a difference, and even for the, the distance that they've come so far, it has depended on international collaboration and support. And that is why the work we're doing at the Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation is so important and so critical to their work. So what are we doing? For me, on a personal level, at the age of 13, for about three months, I was a patient of the first two neurosurgeons in Ghana, Dr. Mustafa of Blessed Memory, as well as Dr. Popolampo. I developed this condition called cerebellar ataxia where I couldn't walk and the thought was that maybe I had a brain tumor. Thankfully, I never had to undergo surgery and I miraculously recovered. But that experience spurred me on to undertake a career in medicine and that condition and the whole field of neurosurgery has meant a lot to me. After medical training, I was introduced to a friend's husband who had been ill with headache for a year and had gone to many, many herbalists, but had never seen a medical doctor. I'm not sure why, whether it was due to lack of access or whatever his reason was, I met this gentleman. He had bradycardia, he had a headache. Straight out of med school, I thought, you know what? This is probably a brain tumor. We obtained a CT scan and lo and behold, it was a brain tumor. I found one of the neurosurgeons who was kind enough to perform surgery. But unfortunately, he died within three days of his surgery. What was the reason? He did not have access to a dedicated neurosurgical intensive care unit. So this man found a physician, but there were no units. So this story brings to light the fact that if neurosurgery is going to survive in Ghana, not only does it need providers, it needs equipment, it needs dedicated units, and it needs so many other things to get it functioning. I want to give credit to the Kolebu Neuroscience Foundation, which was found by a nurse several years ago, has been very supportive of neurosurgery training in Ghana. But it's time that Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation also put in the effort. And what are we doing? Recently, we've decided that of all the physicians who are in our membership, we're gonna segment them into subspecialties and working with our colleagues in Ghana. And so we have people like Dr. Thomas Dr. Maso Boache and a few others who are neurosurgeons and of all the neurosurgical trainees in the country at this time, I can say that Ghanaian young medical students and doctors are among a lot of the people who are undergoing neurosurgery training in the United States, including Kojo Sapong, who is a resident, a medical student who just received um, admission to study neurosurgery at Vanderbilt University. The bottom line is there is hope. Many people are being trained, but neurosurgical training 
requires many, many years after medical school, sometimes up to six or even seven years. That makes it hard for a lot of people. Ghana also needs a special neurosurgery training center. At this time, the fully fledged one is at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. And so no matter where residents go, they have to end up at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital to complete their neurosurgical training to become full fledged neurosurgeons. I want to give a hat off to Dr. Hari Akuto and Dr. Banka, who I knew, I believe they were a year or so behind me in medical school. Dr. Dakura, Dr. Idrisu, and all the many, many neurosurgeons, or I should say the 22 neurosurgeons that we have in Ghana at this time, we want to salute you. And Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation would like you to know that we're doing what we can to help. Please support the work of Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation. Go to our website, donate, support us, become a friend of GPSF, encourage us, like our videos, share our videos, and help us. If you know of any physician who's not affiliated with us, let them know that we're working together, we're stronger together, and we're going to impact Ghana. Thank you very much. Enjoy the video. Hello, 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 uh, hello, and uh, welcome to UN headquarters, Dr. Teddy Totime one of Ghana's foremost neurosurgeons. Uh, one of them. One okay, of one of them. <laughs> uh, okay, one of, one of 22 <laughs> right. neurosurgeons in right, Ghana. How right. many neurosurgeons do we need for a population of uh, 30 million? In, in the U.S. it's like one to 70,000 in the U.S. But in Ghana? Neurosurgeons. In Ghana it's about one to 800,000. The, the number of neurosurgeons to yeah. patients or yeah. to population right. in the United States yes. where we are now it's here in New York. 70, it's one to 70,000. But for Ghana... So Ghana is um, 35 million people. Yes. And there are 22 of us. Which makes it so, one to... Uh, so it's uh, so let's say it's one to almost two million. So bottom say, line, yeah. we need more neurosurgeons. We need more, neurosurgeons. We need more doctors. Yes. So we are here uh, in the North Lawn of the United Nations uh in new york uh, one of my favorite places i'm just standing away from because in the back you see the east river and this is one of my favorite places because again when i started here at the un nearly 20 years ago there were only two or three tall buildings now the skyline is getting filled which then means uh from little beginnings this is possible uh let's say in accra so one thing here why don't you tell us you are here attending a conference what's right. been happening well i came for um, a conference of the american association of neurosurgeons um, so i came to give a talk on neurosurgery in ghana um, so it got finished what was it two days ago mm. it's the biggest uh, meeting in the u.s after covid so right so this this it's a historic because this was a time to bring about almost three thousand neurosurgeons together in person in person right. what what were the highlights three so, highlights of what you told them about neurosurgery in Ghana well the fact that we've come a long way um, neurosurgery training in Ghana started in 1967 when we had our first neurosurgeon but the thing is that for 30 years there was no new neurosurgeon trained right so uh, most of the um, I think 12 locally trained neurosurgeons over have been in the last um, 10, 15 years. We didn't have a strategic we plan. We didn't have a strategic plan. Um, and we still do not have a strategic plan because um, we don't have any funding arrangement for training new neurosurgeons. Over a number of years, over five, number, ten over, years, over to say next, that right. in the next ten years, right. we want to train right. and deliver so there's this no number of really strategic government plan. However, the Ghana uh, um, Physicians and uh, Surgeons College of Physicians and Surgeons has just recently launched a strategy where neurosurgery is part of the. Um, the favored specialties and mm. the needed specialties mm. because truthfully yeah. um, traumatic brain injury yes. is a top killer 
of people between age and 40 in the world. Which are probably the most productive years. Exactly. They're the most productive years. Yeah. And, you know, in the U.S., maybe 5% of people who get traumatic brain injuries yes. will die. In Ghana, in the developing world, it's 80% of people who get traumatic brain injuries. Die. People who could have been saved. Who could have been saved. And if most we, of these we got people, the right expertise. Yes, and most of these people are dying outside the hospital. Right. They are not being brought to they the hospital in the first place. Right. The second thing is the current epidemic in Ghana, which is stroke. By having young people with hemorrhagic stroke, that is when the blood vessels in the brain burst because of hypertension. You are saying it's an epidemic it's an in epidemic. Ghana now. Why? I'm, we're having at least three or four people a week coming to the hospital. Young people. With young people, you know, and they, the, the ages are getting younger and younger. What is the cost? We just don't have a primary health care system that picks up these hypertensives and treats them. So the first time they know they have hypertension is when they get a stroke. Is that failure to do annual uh, medicals? It's, it's, it's failure to have a system that requires annual medicals. Right. And failure to have an environment where people can walk in and check their blood pressures. And also... It's as simple as checking your blood it. pressure. Yeah, that's it. And failure to also have a system that um, finances the treatment of blood pressure. If somebody's there in Ghana or maybe anywhere in the developing world listening to you and I... Right from here at UN headquarters. Right. And they are saying, I don't want this sudden stroke to happen to right. anyone. What would you tell them to do religiously? Well, we just have to check our blood pressures. Go into the hospital, check your blood pressures. Every should... month, every week? Well, um, you know, I think the most realistic thing would be to do a checkup every year. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so to do a so you know an overall have, medical check. Yes, I have a friend who has maybe a very on your good, birthday. Yes, so treat he has yourself a, to a exactly, medical check. Exactly. So he has that routine. Right. He's been able to keep to it, and um, he's checking every year. Should I people it, buy blood pressure uh, machines and be checking at home? That helps because it can give a sort of initial screen, yeah, uh, an initial warning to say. Okay, but no, right now, you think it's an epidemic. It is. I'm seeing too many people who are, who are presenting like that. And it's a devastating injury because it means that the person will not be able to use half of his body, basically for the rest of his life. You know. What about those who manage to recover fully from stroke? Well, um, there's no full recovery from stroke because everywhere that the blood leaks into, yeah. those blood cells don't come back. So you get a stroke. It's just a matter of how disabled one gets. Mm. It's not a matter of how much you recover. I see that our uh, video is going... I could talk to you for hours. Right. It's nearly seven right. uh, minutes. If you want to advise somebody just to take better care of themselves so they don't have to come to you, right. even though you are already there as a neurosurgeon right. to help, right. what three things will you tell them, young person, to avoid stroke? Here are two, three things you should do. Well, first of all, let's exercise. Um, we're becoming less mobile people. We're sitting for long periods, going to work, sitting, coming home, sitting, gaining weight. Secondly, let's do the checking, you know, let's do the health checks, right? As regularly as possible. As regularly as possible. Definitely once a year on your Definitely birthday. Definitely once a year. Treat once yourself. A year on your, on uh -huh. your birthday and I'm preaching to myself, I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing is just let's think about the fact that we all have a, a role to play in Ghana. We all have a, a, something to give to society. Mm. And that commitment is in itself relieving and uh, takes some pressure off ourselves and, and um, just gives us the ability to keep going. Having something to get Every up to one do. of us must believe yes. I have something right. to offer right. to make Ghana better. Right. And having something that enables us to get up in the morning um, and know that we have a purpose. Mm. 
is healing in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's those are the things I'd like to say. <laughs> Dr. Teddy Totime, <laughs> right. you are at the University of Ghana Medical Center. Yes. So I am welcoming you here at the UN. Yes, please. And I can't wait to come back home and you <laughs> welcome me at the University I'll of Ghana Medical. Tour. You retaliate. I'll give you the tour. Thank I'll you. Give you the tour. Thank you very much. Open up the good work. Oh, you are done. <laughs> you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye.